What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, man. You guys know who it is. It's Kevo, man. Okay, so this one, this one, the tr it's called The Truth. I did not declare martial law alone by Ferdinand Marcos. This was an old one, but this was one that was recommended to me by one of you guys. You guys want me to check this one out, so I'm like, you know what? I will check it out because I know a lot of people said that Marcos was a great president, man. A great president. Lately, I've been doing a lot of videos about Marcos. And I know about Marcos' gold and what he did for the Philippines. Also, I know that he was like one of the longest running presidents of the Philippines. But anyways, man, we're about to get into this. But before we get into this, make sure you guys go check out my Instagram page at It's Kevo For Real, man. Go check out my Instagram page. Go check it out right now. And uh, let's get into this video. I may have committed many sins in my life, but stealing money from the people and from the government is not one of them. You know, when I proclaim martial law, I didn't proclaim martial law alone. Uh, it is made to appear as if uh, I, I just uh, signed the decree and said, I impose martial law on each and every one of you. No. I ask the legislature to please pass a law proclaiming martial law because there was anarchy in the country. Now, uh, let me uh, say this. The opposition was strong. And uh, they were members of the Security Council and somehow they adopted the resolution which uh, required that there be a unanimous vote for the armed forces to be able to move. And therefore the armed forces was immobilized. At the same time, I asked uh, um, the um, opposition party to come and join me in a coalition government. I offered one half of the cabinet. And of course they laughed at me and said, why should we join you? We're going to take over the government. By the time you are through with the exercise, you're dead. Wow. Politically and otherwise. So, and they uh, refused to join uh, me. I asked the advice of the uh, judiciary. I asked the Supreme Court justices, the you know, Court of Appeals justices, and the members of the private sector. And all of them told me there's only one man who can proclaim martial law, and that is the president. And you are it. Wow. You are the only one who can proclaim martial law. This is why I must carry this particular mark in our history. I could, have, I could not have transferred it to the legislature. Wow. Why? Because the legislature did not have the power. What does the Constitution provide? The uh, president shall be the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Philippines, and he may order the armed forces out to quell any disorder, riot, rebellion, invasion, insurrection, and... In okay, so, so what I'm hearing so far is he didn't want to declare martial law, man. Like, it seemed like he was forced to declare martial law. Like, a lot of things in the Philippines, what I said, like, even with the new president, like, someone has to, like, the hard, make the hard decisions. And it seemed like Marcos did a lot of the hard decisions for the Philippines to make it a better country. Like, he started the vision... And now President Duterte is continuing the vision. A lot of people told me that President Duterte is continuing the vision of, of Marcos. And uh, Marcos was one of the great ones as well. So from what I'm seeing so far, it seems like he was he had no choice. Because this was in, in uh, chaos. And the rebels. In case of invasion, insurrection, rebellion, or imminent danger thereof, when the public safety requires it, he may suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or proclaim martial law throughout the Philippines or any part thereof. What does that provision provide? It provides that only the president can proclaim martial law. I repeat, that is why I had to assume a responsibility. And I see. I just said that, like, he knew he had to take the responsibility, even though it's going to be marked, like, people may think that he's the bad one, people may not agree with it, but he felt like he needed to take control of the country because of all the rebels, and that's that's tough, man. He, even though he knew what was going to happen, he still declared martial law, but it wasn't because, like, he wanted to do it by himself. He went to the, the proper authorities, like the government, to uh, tell them that they should declare martial law, and they forced his hand. I am not one for shirking duty, 
The people said there was necessity for proclaiming martial law. And the people said, you are the only official who can proclaim martial law. So I, hey, I proclaimed martial law. And I sincerely believed that it was necessary to proclaim martial law to install order and stability because there was complete anarchy throughout the country at the time. Now, therefore, uh, at that particular period, uh, what was the status of our government? Our government was immobilized, impotent. The armed forces could not move out. The industry was uh, not at all in any way uh, um, moving. Uh, there was no income coming into government. Everybody was running away. They burned the U.S. Embassy, partly burned the U.S. Embassy, wow. tried to burn it anyway. They tried to kidnap the American ambassador. American ambassador was by road, ambassador by road. But whatever it is, they burned the Manila International Airport. Oh, wow. They bombed the Supreme Court. They bombed the Constitutional Convention. They bombed the City Hall. They burned uh, part of uh, Malacanian Palace. They attempted to uh, kidnap my children. They attempted wow. to kill the president eight times. There was, of course, an attempted assassination against the First Lady. You all know about that. What we have asked is this. We want a study. What is it that is necessary in order that we can perform our job? You and I know that if the Philippines is attacked, the United States is not necessarily bound to immediately react because the provision of the Mutual Defense Pact is that you will immediately take steps as is necessary to meet the contingency in accordance with your constitutional okay. processes. So what does that it. mean? That means that you go to the Senate and the right. House of Representatives. That's what does it. that mean? That means delay while we are dying there. 75% of our cities were devastated in the last war. We lost a million men. Shall I quote you the statements of Roosevelt and MacArthur? that every caraba will be paid for? Shall I tell you that the veterans who were inducted into the USAF, the United States Armed Forces of the Philippines, of the Far East, your armed forces were paid only one half the salary of your soldiers? Wow. Shall I tell you that uh, we almost turned communists because you refused to recognize us? Shall I tell you that uh, I had a difficult wow. time stopping my guerrillas? 25,000 of them from joining the communists because precisely you you, you uh, sort of forgot that uh, we had done the fighting for you, you know. And it is not fair to accuse the Philippines of any violation of human rights when there has been no violation. Wow. So if there has been any violation, we punish. One thing I got to say, man, Marcos right now is, sounds like a really smart guy. Like, he knew what he was doing. Like, he knew what, what he was doing for his country. And he did it for the people. Let's just listen to him the way he's talking, man. He sounds like a really smart man. Those who have violated. Do you think that if there was any corruption by the Marcos family, that we can maintain the present prestige and leadership of uh, the Marcoses in the Philippines? What do you think the Filipinos are? They are a very literate people. Literacy in the Philippines has increased up to 90% nationwide. And in Manila, it is 100% uh, uh, um, literacy. It was in the dark. Um, and there were doubts and misgivings. There were fears that you were, you were tiring. You were uh, weary. You doubted your own strength. You didn't know where you were going. But now, there is uh, hope. It's still partly in the shadows, but uh, it's trying to emerge. But we have a program which uh, harnesses the energies of those who are half employed, like uh, those who are in the farms. You see, uh, those who await for the coconuts to fall or who plant rice are uh, partly employed. And so we allow them to uh, um, engage in the, what we call small, medium-scale industries, contract work, 
Where in what country do you see, say, a boot block? A boot block. Go to a rural bank and say, look, I used to borrow money from this usurious uh, uh, lender here. I borrow five uh, pesos in the morning. I have to uh, pay him six pesos yeah. in the afternoon. Can't you lend me uh, 50 pesos uh, now and I will repay you uh, later on? I have no collateral. I am unknown. I don't... Uh, I live in the streets. And yeah. in what country will you see the rural bank lend this boot black money? After looking at his shoe shine stand and gathering all the other shoe shine boys and putting them to work and getting them to repay this indebtedness, not uh, in a week, but perhaps even in a day. A day. Or fishermen, fishermen who live a hand to mouth existence. Even here, in your prosperous United States, can a poor fisherman go to a bank and borrow money on his name, on his signature? Probably not. He cannot, but here in the Philippines, he can. A poor fisherman can go to the bank and say, look, I live in so-and-so, and the um, chairman of my village can certify that I am a poor fisherman. And I would like to organize a group. Can you lend us 5,000 so I can buy a motor? I can buy a net, I can buy a small uh, boat, and uh, we can improve our uh, earnings. earnings. And under our laws, we have set aside funds, which then are lent out. Wow. And this man sounds like he had a, a vision for the Philippines, man. Like, that is so true. No other country, if you can't show credentials in a bank that you can pay it back, they will not give you a loan. Like if you go you, you for a, go to a bank like in Canada to get a loan, if it's a business loan, you have to have a proper business plan. You have to have like your margins and saying how much you expect to uh, come back like with within the year and how soon are you able to pay the money back with interest. And if they, they look at your your uh, your plan and they feel like it's not going to make the money, they just say no. Sorry, we can't give you the money. Or they give you a ridiculously high interest rate, man. An interest rate where you can't even pay back. It's like, what's the point? It's like they want you to fail. Like, I'm listening to Marcos right now, and he feels like he wants his fellow Filipinos to succeed. He wants them to do better. He wants them to better their lives. But for some reason, I don't know what happened. Well, let's keep listening. We have been able to lend out about 1 billion, 200 million pesos wow. under this scheme, and they have been repaid. 1 billion. They have been repaid, and that's the it's been repaid. Uh, worst part about it, isn't it? Uh, uh, many people don't believe it. Wow. But uh, they have been repaid. So him giving up money to the Filipino people, actually the Filipino people pay them back. Because the thing about it, like I always say, the Filipino people are very proud people, man. And they're honest. Most of them are honest. Okay, a lot, Some people say don't trust everyone. But so far what I've seen, most of them are honest. And Marcos really had a plan for his country. And was going in the right direction. Alright guys. So you heard what I just said about Marcos, man. Honestly, Marcos... From what I've seen, this I know this whole video said I did not declare martial law alone, but I felt like this wasn't really a video about him declaring martial law. I felt this was a video more about him, like saying his plan for this for the Philippines and his vision, like he wanted to give give the Filipino people a better lives. He did his best. He like just at the end there when he was saying that um, he set aside money. So if you came to, like a poor fisherman came into the bank and said they would need a loan to improve their lives get a better boat, get a better net, get a motor, they will give you the money. And they would, and the thing about it, every time when they give the money, the people come back and pay the money back to the Filipino bank. Like that's just something like you don't, you don't see that like in Canada, man, or any kind of American states, man. This is something where like, I can't believe like, honestly, how, like how, how did they pay back? Let's think about it. But they always paid it back because Marco said it in. He was always repaid so it was an investment and an investment always repaid back to the filipino people and always better the filipino people's lives and even the poor fisherman better his life right because i know someone was telling me that sm 
SM was a very small company, man. Like when we started way back, the shoe market, and it was a person who used to clean shoes who started SM. And I look at SM now. So SM is like the biggest chain of malls and even expanded in the Philippines, man. All because one person had a small dream and made it into something bigger than than whoever. Than he, he even probably thought it would ever be, right? Anyways, man, that's what I had to say about this. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comments down below, man. If you guys need to the channel, man, give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn that post notification bells on. If you guys have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. Um, don't forget to go check out my Instagram page at it's Kevin for real. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace.